Welcome to our continuing analysis of machine learning and what we're going to do in this video is review the gradient. So where does the gradient come from? Well it comes from the fact that we want to find the weights in our neural net. So there's the definition of the network. We have capital L layers and we have weights uh, w superscript L bias is B superscript L. The weights between uh, neurons in layer L minus 1 indexed by K are feeding the jth neuron in the next layer. And in that next layer, an act activation function is defined and the whole equation is bottled up into the one you see at the bottom. That gives us the activation of the ELF layer having been fed from the neurons in the L minus 1th layer. So let's draw a picture of what this might look like. So here we have layer L minus 1 and here we have layer L. We will pick the kth neuron in layer L minus 1. So this is neuron K. Out of this comes the activation that we see there. This is AK of L minus 1. Now, this output is now, this activation output is now transmitted to the jth target neuron in layer L. So what happens? We have the transmission of AK L minus 1 to neuron J in the ELF layer and the weight here is W J K superscript L. So we L says our target layer is the ELF layer, our target neuron is J in the ELF layer, and our neuron delivering this weight uh, on the uh, activation here is indexed by K. Now, of course, the Jth neuron receives outputs from other neurons in the L minus 1th layer. So say this is the K plus 10, 10 lower down than K, and that's going to also transmit with its weight here, and that's going to be W, J, K plus 10 is the index, and L meaning going from the L minus 1th layer to the Lth. Now, Symbolically, what we can do is we think of this node here for the jth neuron as a summation of all the inputs coming in and then fed to an activation function f. In this case, f superscript l, and this will give us for the jth neuron a sub j superscript L. So this diagram here is essentially the explanation of this equation. And what we have to do is then take this output and go to the next layer. So it's going to be summation of the, this activation for all the J neurons with their weights to the next layer with F again. So what we have is a nested uh, layering, if you like, of all the activations, weights, and biases. I didn't put in the bias here. We should always put in a bias. We have B superscript L. Okay, so that's the diagrammatic intuitive explanation of the equation. It comes from a model from neuroscience, although I, if you like, a mathematical model. So we shouldn't really use neural networks, we should use artificial neural networks to emphasize the distinction. Having done a model, it's going to take some input and, and send it to outputs, and I'll erase this as I'm speaking. We have to define the difference between our prediction 
and the actual data. And that's done in the equations you see. They look kind of messy, but they're just compact representations of what we already know. Now, the loss function depends on the desired output and the prediction, and that's what you see in the middle of the slide. The prediction is the output of our network has capital L layers, and we start with the input acting on the weights, activation through the next layer, and so on. And you can see that we have a nested sequence of activations and weights. And uh, that's why when we want to compute the gradient, we have to use the chain rule and go all the way back from the output to the input. The activation functions are usually uh, sigmoid when we begin, but later on we'll find another function that actually works better and we'll see why. Also, we've looked at different discrepancies between the prediction and the desired output. So a simple one could be a mean square error or it could be entropy. The problem we have is minimize the loss function to get the best weights that fit to the desired output. So to do this minimization, and there's our loss function again, we have to find initial values for our model and then start training the model and updating the weights and biases. And as we saw before, the update equation is given below. Uh, the new weights are the old weights minus some learning rate eta that we will specify times the gradient. The gradient of the loss function is obtained by back propagation from the output to the input, and it is done using uh, automatic differentiation. So we've done all that before. We want to take a look now as what we do with the gradient. And so far, we've only been looking at one input datum. In general, we'll have lots of input data to deal with, so we want to know the best way to use that data in finding our updates.